am Simon Lomatas and today I am going to show you how to perform the step-by-step -step procedure on urinary catheterization to female and male clients. This procedure has a lot of purposes such as to relieve urinary retention, to obtain a sterile urine specimen, to measure the residual urine remaining in the bladder after voiding, to control urinary incontinence, to provide access for installing medication into the bladder, to maintain an empty bladder during surgery, and lastly, to monitor hourly urine production in seriously ill clients. Are the materials needed for urinary catheterization? External dodging tray, bed pan, waterproof underpad, pick up forcep, lubricant, betadine solution, sterile dry cotton ball, catheter, sterile 10 cc syringe filled with distilled water, triple distilled water vial, plaster, urine bag, glove. Sterile Let's first do the procedure on female client. First, review client's health record, check client's chart for physician's order. Because catheterization is only if with the physician's order. I have also Brown, date of birth, December 2, 1970. And now I am looking for an order for insertion of Foley catheter. Now, I have to see that I will be inserting a Foley catheter if my patient is unable to void after 6 hours post-op. Next, check if the client voided recently and look for allergies, especially for shellfish, betadine, and latex products. So, I see that the patient has no known for allergies. Step, identify the client and establish rapport to ensure the right client and elicit cooperation. Assess the client for the need of catheterization and explain the procedure to the client to gain cooperation. Hello mom, good morning. I am Saima Mamatas, your nurse for today. Can you state your name and date of birth? Okay, let me see your hand. Uh -huh. So today, mom, I am here to perform a urinary catheter for you, which means that I have to insert a tube inside your, your urethra to empty your bladder so the urine will be drained from there. Is that okay with you? Okay, mom. So when did the last time you void? Mm -hmm. That's uh, very a little while. So let me make sure that you don't have any allergies. No? Any allergies for betadine or latex products? No? That's good. Next, provide good light because good lighting is necessary to locate the miatus clearly. Provide privacy by closing doors and pulling the curtains. The client has the right to be protected from being exposed to the other. Mom, before we start the procedure, do you have any questions? Will it get hurt? You might feel a little bit of pressure, but I'm gonna walk you throughout all the steps and I'm gonna have you to take a deep breath right before the insertion. So that would help ease the pressure. Replace the top sheet with top blanket. Place waterproof under pot under the client's buttocks to protect the bed linen from moisture and getting soil. Next step, replace the top sheet with top blanket. Place waterproof under pot under the client's buttocks to protect the bed linen from moisture and getting soil. Okay, Mount Elsa, I had to change your top sheet. Place in a dorsal recumbent position with the feet apart and drape the client. Because good visualization of the miatus is important, embarrassment, chilliness, and tensions interferes with the introduction of the catheter. I have to place you in a recumbent position to access you during the procedure. Okay, can you flex your 
fit for me. Four. Yeah. Like that. Good job. Now I am going to insert this under pod. Can you lift your buttocks for me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Hair flushing procedure remove and discard used working gloves because cleansing the perineal area prevents introduction of bacteria and prevents the spread of microorganisms. Prepare the urine receptacle and tubing if an indwelling catheter is to be inserted. The tubing facilitates in connecting the catheter to the drainage system. This is the urinary catheter kit and I'm gonna open this in the inside it's sterile. So when you open the kit, you must start it the on the corner that is away from you and on the side and that uh, corner that is near. So this field is sterile. So this is the sheet. This one will serve as my sterile field. Open the catheterization pack and bring it near to the perineal area. Observe a septic fitting. Placement of equipment near the work site increases the efficiency and sterile technique pr protects the client and prevents the spread of microorganisms. This is a French 14 catheter for our female client. I'm gonna drop it on the sterile field like this. I'm gonna squeeze a small amount of lubricant over the sterile field. Make sure not to touch the sterile field to avoid contamination. Get two cotton balls from the pack and place on the sterile field, then pour betadine over them to promote efficient time management. So make sure not to touch the sterile field. Put on sterile gloves to avoid cross-contamination of microorganisms. Then, this procedure, practice the procedure of gloving because we are doing a um, sterile technique procedure. I'm going to put my gloves. Discard the wrapper, hold at the center because the center is still sterile. Grasp the upper corners of the eye or fenestrated drape and then fold it without touching sterile areas. A drape provides a sterile field where the equipment and hands will be placed. Prevents accidental contamination from adjacent areas. Next, place eye or fenestrated drape over the vulva area exposing the labia. So, this is the drape and I'm gonna place it here. Excuse me. Lubricate one to two inches of the catheter tip to avoid clogging the lumen. Because lubrication facilitates the insertion of the catheter and reduces trauma to the tissues. With the thumb and forefinger of your non-dominant hand, spread the labia and identify the urinary meatus. Maintain the hold until the catheter is been inserted. And with the dominant hand, disinfect the meatus twice using the cotton ball with betadine. Cleanse the area and minimize the risk of urinary tract infection by removing surface pathogens. Start disinfecting the miatos that is away from you then discard 
get another cotton ball, then disinfect the opposite side that is near from you. Insert the tip of the catheter into the dimple-like structure below the clitoris, which is the meatus about 2 to 3 inches or until urine flows. Do not force the catheter to grow the urethra. Ask the client to breathe deeply and rotate the catheter gently if slight resistance is met. Mag, I am going to insert the catheter now. Can you take a deep breath for me? Inhale, exhale. Yeah, I like that, Mom. Very good. You might feel a little bit of resistance, but you just have to rotate the catheter. Sige, B. The sphincter relaxes and the catheter can enter the bladder easily when the client relaxes. Hold the catheter securely with your non-dominant hand while the bladder empties. Collect a specimen if required. Continue drainage according to hospital policy. Remove the catheter smoothly and slowly if straight catheter is used. The catheter is only needed to drain urine present in the bladder and is not intended for continuous use. If a Foley catheter is used, introduce 5 cc or follow manufacturer's instruction of distilled water to secure the catheter. Gently pull the catheter until the retention balloon is snuggled against the bladder neck. Resistance will be met. Remove the fenestrated drain. Creates a balloon to ensure catheter retention. Maximizes continuous bladder drainage. Proper attachment prevents trauma to the urethra and meatus from tension on the tubing. Attach catheter to the urine bag below the level of the bladder. Tape catheter to the thigh. Do not attach it to movable things like the side drills because the side drills is movable. So it's better to touch it below the bed. This is to avoid reflux of urine to prevent infection or UTI. Then remove the drain. Mom Elsa, now I am done to the procedure. Now I am going to return you in a comfortable position. How do you feel, Ma? Yeah, let's wait till the bladder is empty. Do aftercare of other equipment used and then remove gloves and do hand washing. Hand hygiene control the spread of microorganisms. After the urine drainage, label the urine specimen and send to the laboratory promptly. Urine kept at the room temperature may cause organisms, if present, to grow and distort, distort laboratory findings. Lastly, document the following. Date and time procedure started and ended. Client's response, reaction to the procedure, and record the client's output if required. A careful record is important for documenting data after the client's care. The reporting and recording of information about the procedure must be accurate and timely for continuity of care. After the procedure, don't forget to document the time of removal and the time by which client should have next waiting time. A careful record is important for documenting data after the client's care. The reporting and recording of information about the procedure must be accurate and timely for the continuity of care.
So this is my sterile field and now I am going to perform how to insert urinary catheter to a male client. Grasp the upper corners of the fenestrated eye drape and unfold it. Place the fenestrated drape aseptically over the perineal area with the penis extending through the opening. A drape provides a sterile field where the equipment and hands will be placed, prevents accidental contamination from adjacent areas. Holding the penis with the non-dominant hand, disinfect the meatus twice using the cotton ball with betadine aseptic antiseptic solution. Sir, I am going to disinfect your penis. and discard then repeat and discard cleanse the area and minimizes the risk of urinary infection by removing surface pathogens lubricate 6 to 8 inches of the catheter tip to avoid clogging and lumen Lubrication facilitates the insertion of the catheter and reduces trauma of the tissues. Hold the penis perpendicular to the body and pull up gently. Sir, I'm going to insert the catheter now. I want you to take a deep breath. Exhale, inhale. Yeah, that's good, sir. Hold the catheter in the dominant hand, steadily insert the catheter about 8 inches until the urine is noted in the drainage bag or tubing. 2 to 3 ml if required and continue the drainage according to the hospital policy. Then remove the catheter smoothly and slowly. If the catheter is straight, catheter is only needed to drain urine present in the bladder and is not intended for the continuous use. If a folly catheter is used like this, introduce 5cc or follow the manufacturers to secure the catheter. Gently pull the catheter until the retention balloon is snuggled. Against the bladder neck, resistance will be met and then remove the penetrated tray. Creates a balloon to ensure catheter retention, minimize, maximizes continuous bladder drainage, proper attachment prevents trauma to the urethra and meatus from tension on the tubing. Then attach the bar. Always attach the urine bag below the bladder. Then tape the catheter on the thigh to prevents unnecessary movement. Discard. Attach catheter to urine bag below the level of the bladder to prevent ur urinary tract infection and tape the catheter to the lower abdominal area. Then remove and clean the equipment and make the client comfortable. So I'm going to remove this under pad. Yeah. Thank you.
Now, sir, I'm done with the procedure. I want you to relax and thank you for the cooperation. Keep on the urine specimen and send it to the laboratory promptly because the urine that keep in a room temperature may cause organisms, if present, to grow and distort the laboratory findings. After that, wash her hands and remove the gloves. Hand washing prevents the spread of microorganisms. And of course, after the procedure, record the time of the catheterization, the amount of the urine removed, a description of the urine, and the client's reaction to the procedure and the other observations. Careful record is important for documenting data after the client's care. The reporting and recording of the information about the procedure must be accurate and timely for the continuity of the care. This procedure is for removing and indwelling catheter. So the first step is to check the order on client's chart. Removing of urinary catheter is only done if with medical order. So patient also Brown has an order for removing the urinary catheter. Next, obtain a 5 to 10 ml syringe depending on the size of the balloon of the catheter and absorbent towel. So these are the materials I need in removing the catheter, absorbent towel, um, 10 cc syringe and a clean glove. Do hand washing, hand hygiene, control the spread of microorganisms. With a ticket, call out client's name, check the client's identification band, and explain the procedure. Inform the client that there may be a slight discomfort as catheter is removed. This ensures the right client and elicit cooperations. Hello ma'am, how are you? Are you Elsa Brown? Oh yes, okay, let me check. Oh, it's you ma'am. So today, I have an order to remove your catheter, which means that I'm going to pull out the tube from your ureter. So this procedure might gonna be a little be painful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, don't gloves to avoid cross-contamination of microorganisms. So this procedure is not necessary to be um, sterile, so you can use a clean gloves. Clean glove. Okay. Place the absorbent towel on the mattress under the catheter and attach the syringe to the balloon port. Withdraw all the water or solutions from the balloon. This protect the bed linen from moisture and getting soil. Mom Elsa, we are gonna start the procedure. I am be exposing your perineal area. And let's flex your knees. Okay, like that. Very good. I'm going to slide this absorbent pod. Okay. Now I'm gonna remove this catheter from the thigh so we can withdraw all the water. Now I am going to withdraw the water. This procedure enables us to deflate the balloon from that is inside the bladder, which holds the catheter in place. Okay, and done. Hold the absorbent towel with your non-dominant hand in front of the perineum. 
pinch the catheter near the meatus with your dominant hand and pull it steadily out in the absorbent towel until the end is retrieved. Hold the catheter at an upward angle to the drainage tubing so that may urine it will drain into the drainage bag. I want you to take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Yeah, very good. In a go. Hold the catheter in upward angle. Inspect the catheter to make certain it is intact. If it is not, notify the physician immediately. Then, detach the urine bag. <laughs> Measure the output in the drainage bag. Record the output on the input and output sheet. Empty the urine into the toilet bowl and dispose the urine bag into the yellow bin because this one is infectious. Now I'm going to remove the absorbent pipe. And discard. Remove gloves and wash hands and then make the client comfortable. Mom Elsa, I am done removing your catheter. How do you feel now? Yes, you feel good? Instruct the client to drink extra fluid and warn that there may be mild burning with the first few voiding. Remind the client of the expected waiting time. Mom Elsa, I encourage you to drink extra fluid and you might feel a little burning sensation. So after that, it will be good. After the procedure, don't forget to document the time of removal and the time by which the client should have next waiting time. A careful record is important for documenting data after the client's care. The reporting and recording of information about the procedure must be accurate and timely for the continuity of care.